wildfire season used to be fairly well defined, but that's not the case anymore. Now there's a lot of reasons for that. But as we film this video today in the middle of August, 16 states have at least one large wildfire burning. Now, the thing about wildfire smoke is, of course, it doesn't respect state lines and it travels hundreds, if not thousands of miles. So there's millions of people who are impacted by that smoke. Hi, this is Mark Davidson. I'm with Campo USA. Today, we're going to talk to Jennifer Webb. Now, Jennifer is the Western U.S. Segment Manager for the Molecular Division of Camfell, and she lives in one of those 16 states and one that frequently has a lot of large fires, and that's California. So we're going to talk to Jennifer and find out what it was that she learned from her career in the air filtration industry and how she applied that to her own home to protect the air in her house. So Jennifer, before we get started, if you would take a minute and introduce us to yourself. Okay, hi, uh, my name is Jennifer Webb. I'm the Western Segment Manager for Molecular Filtration. And what that means is gases, odors, fumes, anything that's a kind of a chemical that's in the air that could be dangerous to people or processes or the environment. And one of the common questions I get, especially this time of year is, the odor from wildfire smokes. How do we capture that? And what's interesting and what I've learned is that it really, the odor is the least worrisome contaminant when it comes to filtering wildfire smoke. What, what part of California do you live exactly? So I live in Sacramento, which is in the Central Valley of California. And it tends to be a place a lot of the area wildfire smoke will migrate into and sort of settle. And because of that, we're just keenly aware of the risks of wildfires. And one of the things that we use to determine if it's safe to even be outside is the air quality index, which is a score that was developed by the Environmental Protection Agency to assess what are the levels of contaminants of their six most concerning pollutants. So the concentrations of fine particles that are a thousandth of a millimeter, we call them PM 2.5, lead particles, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and ground level ozone, which is formed when the rays from the sun react with byproducts of combustion. And so when you look at an AQI score on a weather app or go on websites like airnow.gov or purplearrow.com, it will tell you for where you live, like what is your score? And, and it's basically, and it'll also indicate what of those six criteria air pollutants is having the, the highest effect on the score, what's got the highest concentrations. So for example, if the air quality is over 100, especially due to wildfire smoke, it's because of the PM 2.5, those high particle counts. And we try to limit our outdoor activity. If the AQI is above 200, then we either leave town or we find ways to clean the air up in, indoors. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about here is like, what do I do to for my house? Because I often have to stay here. I work from home. And depending on where the fire is, I'm also worried about ground level ozone because breathing that in can be like sunburn for the lungs. Okay, so it sounds like what you basically do is look at a report card for the air and you're able to understand just exactly what the real serious problem is. And then you make adjustments to your lifestyle based upon that, uh, that report card that's available, not just to you, but it's available to everybody. Um, okay, so then let's talk a little bit about what you've learned in your professional life and what is it that you've taken then and into your home life? How do you, how do you balance or two? How do you take advantage of what you know in your work life into your home? Okay. So the first things that you need to do is address as much as you can, the wildfire smoke with your existing HVAC system, the heating, ventilating and air conditioning system, which circulates and conditions the air in your house. And what, the first thing you can do is put the highest efficiency filters in the HVAC system possible. The second thing is to circulate the air as much as possible, even if you're not running the air conditioning or heating, just have the fan going because then it gives the air more chance to filter out those particles. And then the third thing is since most home HVAC systems are not sufficient to capture all the wildfire particulates and gases, do something supplemental like an air purifier. 
Okay, then here's an idea. Let's um, take a look at each one of those separately. So I think the first one you said was the efficiency of the air filter in your house. So talk about that for a little bit. Okay, so most of us now know what the term MERV means, thanks to COVID. And what would be required to capture those PM 2.5 particles is really a MERV 13, a MERV 14. And, you know, as the numbers get higher, it just means it's more efficient against smaller particles. And so my air filter system, my HVAC system really only can take up to about a MERV 11. And the, and the thing is, if I could put a MERV 15 filter, or I could even put a HEPA filter in there, which is even higher than any of those MERV uh, standards. It's just that the system itself, the fan in that unit just can't push the air through that high a filter. It'd be like taking a straw, a regular drink straw and, you know, drinking your water and then trying to do the same thing with a little coffee stirrer and getting as much water as quickly out of that tiny straw. You just can't do it. It just can't push through it. And the risk is that if you put a filter that's whose MERV is too high, the fan will labor. And during you know, warm weather when you've got your air conditioner, the the coils can freeze over. Or if it's during warm, I mean, during hot weather, then you can overheat the whole system. So you really have, you're limited by what you can do. And since I can only do MERV 11, uh, which I do, that's the highest I do. I'm still not catching the PM 2.5, which is what we're worried about in a wildfire. Okay, thanks. I, that's a good... Uh... A good caution for people, just don't run out on Amazon and buy a HEPA filter and stick it into your unit because you're probably going to do some damage. So a uh, good tip. Thanks for that. Now, the second thing you said was you run your HVAC systems fan uh, either 24-7 or very, very often, even if the heating and cooling elements aren't on, you keep running your fan. What does that accomplish? Okay, so since mo uh, most HVAC systems are pulling in about recycling about 80% of your air just kind of recirculates it, even if you're not heating or, or cooling, it's just moving the air around the house. It's kind of like even in your car, if you just have the fan, it's just recirculating the air you have. Now, it isn't going to get stale because you are pulling a little bit of the outside air in, but it just gives the opportunity for the air to pass through those filters. I mean, even in MERV 11, I'm not getting all the small ones, but every pass through that filter is actually going to help. So just keeping the air moving in the house and filtering it as much as possible with just your HVAC system alone is going to make a difference. Okay, thanks. So this sounds like a case and where uh, quantity is actually better than quality. I mean, right. you want to keep that air moving as much as possible. That makes sense. Now, the third thing you mentioned was an air purifier. So if you would talk a little bit about that and then Try to tell us a little bit what it was or what, you know, what you've learned from your professional life that you were able to use to look through all of the different air purifiers and discern which is the really the best air purifier for your particular application. Can you do that? Yeah. And so because I only have MERV 11 and I want at least MERV 13 or 14, and by the way, the higher you go is better. HEPA filters are even better than MERV filters. They capture even smaller particles. But um, of course, most people can't put a HEPA filter in their house. A lot of the air purifiers in the market have HEPA filters. And so what I wanted to do is find one that I knew from my own experience that had performance that was validated. I mean, coming from a company that is very data driven, all of our filters have been tested by internationally recognized standards. You can go online, you can look at air purifiers, they'll say 95% efficient or high capacity carbon to remove all of the, you know, the odors, but they don't test the filters. And so for me to practice what I preach, I wanted to make sure the air purifier I put in my house had that kind of performance, both against particles and the, the gases, the ozone and the, and the odors which are coming out. Okay, so then what type, if you said, again, as you said, you're part of a, a company that this is what you do. So what type specifically a filter are in the purifier that you selected? And what are the test standards they use? And what, what does that HEPA filter really do? Okay, well, so when I'm asked to recommend filters that uh, an air purifier for rooms that rooms or offices or retail spaces that have both particles and odors, we recommend the City M. That's kind of our standard product for those small 
smaller spaces and it's the perfect size for a home. And the reason that it works so well, because we had it running a couple of times last year during the PM, I mean, our AQI of 200 or more is that it does have a HEPA filter, but not just any HEPA filter. It has a 99.99, that's four nines, 99.995 percent efficiency against even the most penetrating particles. That's our absolute HEPA kind of best in class filter. It has two of those. It also has two carbon filters and that's high capacity carbon that have been validated against odors and ozone, which are the two things you would be most concerned about. Um, and then it also is just really quiet. It captures the, it circulates the air in my 3000 square foot house. It's a perfect size for that. It's quiet and then it's capturing all those pollutants. Okay, great. So if, if, if I heard what you said was in one of those really bad AQI days, you relied on the city M product. And did, did you say it worked really well to the point that it, you were able to function inside your house and you almost didn't even know that there was a situation going on outside? Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we did all the things running the fan of our house. I mean, it was during the summer, so we had our air conditioning going, but running it constantly. And then with the city M running, you, the difference between outside and inside was just marked. I mean, you could see the smoke outside, but when you came in, it, the air was great. Okay, great. So th there's a, a good case of how you were able to take your experience in working with some high tech companies uh, around the western half of the U.S. I'm, I'm assuming you work with microelectronic companies, pharmaceuticals, places like that that Hospitals. demand high air quality. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. They demand high air quality. They have to have air, uh, air quality at the highest levels. And you're able to take some of the same technologies that they use bring that into your house and, and reap some of the same benefits. And you're able to do that because this is your world you live in. You're an air filtration professional. So that's that's good news to pass along to everyone else. Thank you, Jennifer. Appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you.